In the wake of the Russian invasion of Ukraine in late February 2022, Western governments imposed harsh sanctions on Russia. According to Yale researchers, more than 1,000 businesses left the country in protest, leaving one million Russians without a job. Even the fast food chain McDonald's decided it was time to leave the country. The situation raises the question, just how much are customers, employees, and shareholders willing to give up for a cause? We are uh, experiencing every day uh, now what some people call walk capitalism, or um, the fact that companies seem to be taking moral stance on various issues. And so the question is, what is the legitimacy of this moral stand? Where does it come from? Um, and uh, at the end of the day, who pays for it? Because uh, uh, it's easy to be generous with somebody else's money, but uh, the question is, are you willing to be generous with your own money? That's Chicago Booth professor Luigi Zingales. He and fellow researchers surveyed 3,000 Americans in May 2022, three months after the invasion. Respondents were assigned as either a shareholder, an employee, or a customer of a company that continued doing business with Russia. They found that two-thirds would cut ties with the company by selling shares, quitting, or shopping elsewhere. That figure fell to 53% when participants were told that such actions would cost them $100 personally. It then fell to 43% when the cost rose to $500. When the factor of personal cost was removed from the equation, 61% said private businesses should stop all commerce with Russia, whatever the consequences. Just 37% said the decision should reflect only the economic costs and benefits of such an action. These opinions held steady for the customer and employee groups, but the shareholder group was more likely to sever ties with Russia if they thought it would have an actual impact. However, the researchers emphasized the importance of understanding whether people support these actions because they have a concrete goal in mind or because they want to disassociate themselves from the actions of a bad actor, like Russia. And, and, and this is very important because I think very few people dispute that we don't want to supply uh, microchips to Russia uh, that uses the microchips to uh, produce a more lethal weapon. So that's, that's an easy one. Uh, but um, going back to McDonald, McDonald as a chain of outlets throughout, used to have a chain of outlets throughout uh, uh, Russia, and they decided to leave Russia uh, with very large costs, $1.4 billion of cost um, when they left. And, you know, it's not even obvious, if you think from a strategic point of view, that this is the right thing to do, because what are you trying to achieve? And this is we. Hopefully, we're trying to uh, achieve uh, uh, the end of the war in Ukraine. Um, but uh, if you are trying really to generate a resentment of the population against Putin, it's not obvious that uh, uh, a big ban from the West will do it, uh, rather than a big ban from the West uh, might actually have a counterproductive effect. The researchers suggest that customer views on morality have the power to influence major corporate decisions for better or worse than originally intended. Customers have an enormous amount of power because uh, think about uh, uh, the uh, millions of customers of McDonald's. So if it is true, now, customers of McDonald's, number one, are spread throughout the world, including Russia, so I don't expect the Russian to feel the same way as Americans. So it's not obvious that our survey represent the world, number one. Number two, um, the typical customer of uh, uh, McDonald's is in a different, uh, in a very particular socioeconomic uh, group. So again, it's not obvious that they, our survey represents what the customers want. But with this caveat, if you take the responses of, of, of our survey and you apply to all the customers of McDonald's, you have 20, I think there are 20 million customers a day, so even if this were a year, you have 20 million people, each one on average willing to pay $200 to get out of Russia. That's a lot of money, and that justifies uh, very easily spending $1.4 billion to get out. So uh, it's not that uh, uh, inconceivable uh, that uh, when uh, uh, CEOs make these decisions, 
they make him trying to capture uh, what uh, the customers or the employees or the shareholders want. If corporate power can be so heavily influenced by customer power in the arena of geopolitics, then it could pose questionable outcomes for business-to-business -business relationships with customer bases that have opposing moralities. And so, if this trend continues, um, I think we should introduce a new form of uh, ri business risk, which I call uh, stakeholder business risk. Because uh, imagine I am a social media company, um, and uh, as all social media company, I need to have access to a pretty important uh, uh, supply of uh, cloud uh, storage. And uh, there are basically uh, three companies providing uh, cloud storage these days, Amazon, uh, Google, and IBM. And uh, especially uh, Amazon and Google, they're both located uh, in part of the country uh, that is very liberal. And so uh, the risk that the employees might say, we don't want to uh, supply cloud space to this company, uh, becomes a business risk that um, as a social media company, I need to factor in advance. And it's not a problem that is easy to, to solve because uh, um, I could say, okay, I write a breach clause. Uh, when I get the supply from Amazon Cloud, I say that uh, if Amazon Cloud were to interrupt this relationship uh, without just cause, they have to pay me a bazillion dollars, okay? But also, how do you manage it is by supplying your, uh, or, or sourcing yourself from companies that are less uh, at risk of this di uh, disruption of, of supply. And, uh, and so uh, we might end up in a world in which we have a segmented supply chain. We have a blue supply chain and a red supply chain. Uh, we are worried about uh, uh, the world deglobalizing uh, with all the inefficiency that this might generate. Uh, but um, uh, in fact, we should be worried about uh, even the United States deglobalizing and fragmenting into a, a, a blue economy and a red economy. Traditional economics would assume that companies would want to maximize profits in all situations. But the evidence points to the conclusion that the majority of Americans don't necessarily want the companies they shop from, work for, or invest in to behave that way. But there is still risk even beyond losing money. If uh, uh, customers or employees have the wrong notion of what can be effective, uh, they might not only not be helpful, uh, but be counterproductive. So um, I, uh, not surprisingly because I'm an economist, but I am much more in favor of a more consequentialist approach that uh, you uh, want to take a moral stand with this moral stand as a desirable outcome. Uh, certainly, when an, as an undesirable outcome is not the uh, right thing to do. And, uh, you know, there is an expression in, in Latin that's the... Uh, uh, fiat uh, justicia periat mundus, they say, I want the justice to be implemented, and if the world goes to hell, I don't care. Uh, that's not my view of the world. Uh, but as I said, I'm an economist, maybe philosopher thinks differently.